Dr. Phil, weekdays at 4 on KSL 5. Welcome back. There is a lot of discussion about the impact of social media on a young person, often negative with reports of tech increasing ADHD, feelings of self-doubt and depression, even, I mean, a lot of different things. You hear a lot about the negative of kids using social media, but there's a new study that shows it's not all bad, and we often overlook some very important aspects of social mm -hmm. media. So Lois Collins, a reporter with the Desert News, is here, and you've been following this report. First of all, tell us about it, and maybe what the most surprising thing is about this. Okay, so the thing that's interesting about this report is it's one of the few that actually talk to kids instead of about kids, mm. which I think is really important. Um, it was done by Hope Trust, by Hope Lab and Wellbeing Trust, and they looked at how people, especially people who might have some sort of um, tendency toward anxiety or depression, use social media. And what they found among these 19, these, they interviewed, I'm sorry, I'm bumble tonguing this, what, oh, they no. found, <laughs> duh, what they found was that these 14 to 20 year old kids use these in ways that are very helpful and also that start conversations with doctors, with parents. So say I'm a teenager and I'm not feeling great and I kind of, I, I feel a little bit off, but mm -hmm. I don't quite know what's wrong. So I go online and I talk to some of my peers, maybe some people that I don't know who are in my age group about, this is what's going on in my life, what do you think? And you kind of crowdsource some of the information, you look at support groups, you find a little bit of a community to help you, and then you sit down and say, mom and dad, I've been doing some research, and I think maybe I need to see somebody, I'm kind of depressed. So they're using That's it as a, a good resource. Thing. And it's a good way to use it too, it's a really wise, interesting way to use this resource that can be used for good or evil, and we know it can be used for good and evil, but they're helping their own well-being, they're helping their mental health, mm -hmm. and they're building friendships and feeling like they belong, too. It's almost like we don't give them the benefit of the doubt sometimes. We're always harping on the negative uh, effects of the use of social media. And in this case, they're using it for good, in They're a sense. not only using it for good, but they're using it in a, in a clever, helpful way Smart so way. they're learning how to use it they're learning how to use it to benefit themselves and to benefit each other and they're feeling more like they belong too so they're forming community this is great for kids who are lonely for kids who are maybe a little bit socially less adept people who fumble tongue like I do yeah. can practice with strangers like, so what are we supposed to go. do here as parents when all you hear out there is make sure you are monitoring the screen time make sure you know you've got limits and you're not what what are you where's the happy medium here Try, in there's no magic formula, but you talk to your kids about how they're using it and what they're benefiting, and you keep in mind, too, that it's not going to go away. So you want to encourage your mm -hmm. kids to do the things that are helpful and not to do the things that maybe are not helpful. And so it, if it's a way to open conversations, and that's one thing that the study did find, is that kids were talking to their parents more about what they learned, and they were feeling empowered because they weren't just saying, Mom, solve my problem. They were saying, Mom... I think I have a problem and here's why. Or mom, here's what I'm feeling. So it's it's a good thing. Oh, how interesting. Mm. I, it, it is something that we talk about a lot right. on this show and this comes at it from a very different direction. So Lois, thanks for joining us, telling us a little bit more about My this. Place.